hey guys uh, this is himanshu uh, founder of social punk and the yellow shutter great to have a friday session with you it's a good day uh, it's a good weather out there uh, i'll quickly switch off my camera and then once we had in, get into the q and a mode i think i switched off the okay i think i switched off the cam no okay cool uh, so today we're going to speak about something which is very very interesting and it's a hot topic with respect to what is happening in the industry right uh, i'm going to speak about what is a marketing strategy that we should have uh, with respect to the d2c brand uh, and i think d2c is a buzzword um, specifically with the recent uh, uh, unicorns that has come uh, brands like mama earth uh, uh, which which we have also working with and there's a laundry list of brands uh, that we have got with respect to D2C. So let me first uh, make sure that everybody is on the same page and understand what is D2C stand for. Right? I'll, I'll start it from scratch uh, because in this specific session, I guess people will be there from across the board, right? D2C means direct to consumer. Uh, it means a brand is directly selling to consumer, right? There is no uh, distributor, there is no wholesalers, and generally that happens through digital platforms. And what is happening in recent past is that it started with the personal care. Now, I think every category of the business is getting into this space. You have a personal care, you have a apparel, you have shoes, grocery, uh, any, any, anything which you can buy from the nearby shop, correct? The, the brand can directly reach out to you. And there are multiple reasons why this specific industry or way of selling is going up, which you're going to see uh, in next coming uh, slides. What is also important is, and that's the core of my discussion, is that what shall we do as a marketing strategy for a D2C? How I can have a 10x growth with respect to a D2C? Obviously, you can't learn that in about a 40 minutes of the conversation, but you'll get a sense and vibe uh, with respect to what all things shall we do, right? Okay. So first and foremost thing, uh, which is also, uh, which we're going to discuss in detail, right? Know your audience. Uh, what is my brand proposition, which I'm talking about with respect to a D2C, right? How does a D2C brand funnel function, right? Um, how can it reach out to my audience, right? And how shall I measure it? And there's a big dilemma, which I'm going to discuss about in the coming slide. What you guys can also start doing is, as in when you face some question or clarification, just start putting on a chart window. I want to pick that up uh, uh, post uh, 40 minutes of the presentation. We'll kind of have a Q&A uh, for about 20 minutes. So what is D2C? Uh, the multiple ways or multiple areas or multiple uh, brands uh, who are getting into a D2C. So there are bigger brands like an Adidas or Nike. Uh, is it time to go D2C? So if you look at all the bigger brands, right? You pick up Adidas, H&M, Zara, right? All of have them have started their website in last three to four years. You can go and buy uh, from their website and they're playing very very smart game that they're not just restricting themselves to d2c because right now that forms a very small percentage of their overall pie uh, they are uh, kind of having a wholesale as in the retail store they're also having a partnership with brands like mentra and all but what is important to see is they have taken that first step they have their own website uh, they are reaching out to consumer and customers directly and obviously two ways, right? That's the first way. Second is uh, you're a wholesaler for a specific brand, correct? Or you're a wholesaler of a set of different brands. Can I go directly to consumer? That's another way. You are launching a new product. So I'll give an example. Like we work with a brand called Cipla, right? Now Cipla uh, is into pharma space. Now they're launching a new product, which is into a space of, uh, uh, dermatologist space it's a derma product right now what i wanted to do is instead of taking a uh, legacy route of a retail and all we have started with a new channel which is a d2c focus so either a big brand like an h&m zara apparel uh, nike or, or adidas or if you are a wholesaler of a specific product or a manufacturer of a specific product rather than selling through the whole cycle of or all hierarchy of uh, uh, distribution can i directly go to the consumer or what we can also think is that there's a bigger, larger brand uh, like a Cipla or any other brand who wants to start with a new product. Can they start with a 
C2C space. So that's the overall piece. Now, what is important to understand is um, how does a brand plays a role, right? So let's assume, which we all know, right? The moment I have a Nike logo on a T-shirt, right? It costs me about 1400 rupees. If I don't have any logo, correct? Uh, it costs a thousand rupees. Which will you want to buy? I'm going to hear from you guys. I'm going to buy a Nike one, um, same quality, same T-shirt, a left one, a right one. Say left one, a right one. Put it on a dash window right away. I'm going to hear that from you guys. Left one, a right one. Left one, a right one. Uh, Raj, uh, can they put that on the chat window or they're not allowed to do so? Uh, yeah, uh, Himanshu, everybody's replying on questions tab and they all are saying uh, maximum people are saying left. You can see the questions yes. tab. Okay, got it, got it, got it. I picked up the chat window. Okay. Got it, got it. Super. I think that's what I wanted to hear from uh, you guys also. Even though on the left most, uh, which is 400 rupees more expensive as compared to what you're getting on the right hand side, which is 1000 rupees, people prefer to buy the left one, which is at 1400. So now what is important to understand is even though we're getting into a D2C space, right? Building up the brand is a first step, right? We just cannot launch the product, right? Product is one part of it. So the product, if you the underlying product in both what you see is same. What you see on the left hand side and what you see on the right hand side. But what is important to know and understand, it's a brand. It's a simple Nike stamp that we put it across, which allows us to go a little more premium, which allows us to go and to have about 400 rupees extra, right? So step number one, when you're looking at a D2C piece is, what is my brand proposition, right? So you pick up any brand, you pick up a Mama Earth brand, you pick up a Flatheads, you pick up a Neiman's, I'm talking about D2C brand. There is a very, very unique proposition and that we always call it like a USP or, or RTB, which is reason to believe, right? But what is important is that before we get into the D2C space and understand that, hey, I should run an SEO camp, I should run a paid media campaign, I should do a Facebook ads, I should do an SEO. That's important. I, I'm not denying that fact. It's part of a performance marketing. But step one of that is that watch this, which is that one thing uh, uh, which I want to tell it to my consumer, which is unique to me and which is not there in my competitor. And it becomes even more important, right, in a D2C uh, space. Why? Because if you look at Unilever, Procter Gamble and all, they always had an entry barrier. And that entry barrier is distribution, right? Any new brand cannot have a distribution uh, muscle of an ITC or a PNG or a Unilever. But in a D2C space, it's a level ground. Even though a, a, a D2C brand which is starting off, which is a new brand versus a brand which is backed by a PNG or a Unilever, it's a level field for both of them. Yeah, Unilever and PNG may have a muscle of uh, media behind it, but still from a distribution advantage standpoint, all of them are starting off same. So when they're starting off same, what is important is what I'm going to sell is my brand proposition, right? Uh, the brand proposition could be built uh, uh, from ages, which is Nike, Adidas, H&M, Zara, that's one piece. Or if you're starting on your own, you could build that brand had a brand proposition, Flathead had a brand proposition or have a brand proposition. Neiman's have a brand proposition, which is sustainable, fee-based uh, shoes, right? You pick up any DTC brand is one thing which is important. So for a PNG or Unilever, that brand proposition is obviously the brand uniqueness, but also the distribution of the brand, which is not the case in a DTC brand. That is step number one. That is step number one. Step number two is Step number two is, why is it important? So uh, if you guys have seen uh, another brand called the Whole Truth Food, it's a uh, it, it's an energy bar um, and their co-founder Sashank uh, makes a lot of noise in the industry uh, with respect to the product, right? 
Now, look at the packaging, right? Uh, look at the way uh, they are communicating, right? The brand proposition is very clear, they're honest. Uh, they clearly put it across that what is going in the energy bar, uh, it's not hidden somewhere in the back of the pack, right? Uh, it's, it's there on the front of the pack, which is their USP, which is the uniqueness. And the recent day, they also put a post on Instagram that they're going off Instagram, right? They didn't go through a generic way of influencer route. So what they're doing is, even though it's a cluttered market, now every brand has a some bit of an energy bar to it, right? Uh, there's a yoga bar and there are 100 moves which has come over the last few years. But how the whole truth foot is building is, they're clearly saying that I have a unique proposition, right? Um, which, which is I'm true to what I'm serving or what I'm having, right? Uh, but at the same time, from a distribution standpoint, I'm a D2C brand. And then they, they, they kind of look at D2C for different distribution channels, their own website, cred, and whatever it is. But what is important to note is that the building up on a specific brand proposition, which is different to the existing players in the market. Okay. I, I am assuming everybody. Yes. Raj, uh, in case uh, you find, uh, find any audio quality issue, just keep, let me know, na, in case you find anything. Sure, sure. Yep, yep. What is a brand proposition with respect to a Slack? So if you look at Slack, um, how for your team and your work, they came late in the market, correct? Uh, they were not the first movers advantage as we always call it but what they had done eventually is they were able to find the market right and the gap in the market were very clear uh, that there are multiple set of stations uh, there is whatsapp messages so is there a way where all the employees can collaborate uh, with different stakeholders correct and that Came, Slack uh, came up with a very, very strong unique proposition. And then the build up on that. So I'm, I'm talking about different uh, brand proposition. Brand proposition was hub for your team and your work. Move the way you want was Uber's brand proposition, right? This is important. This is the core of any D2C piece. So when you look at like a D2C, brand funnel, right? Um, you have something which the funnel, middle of the funnel and the bottom of the funnel, right? Something which is top of the funnel, right? Um, even things that we part of awareness and interest, right? Uh, when, when you have talking about top of the funnel, what we need to look at is, uh, I need to make sure that a larger audience come to know about my brand, right? Uh, I'm not even talking about they should consider my brand or intent of buying a brand. I'm talking about very simple piece about my brand. They should be aware about my brand, and which is an important piece because when you're launching a new product, right? And irrespective of a category, people, even people don't know about your brand, correct from an awareness point of view, they will never ever even consider it when they're looking to buy that product or a category. And there are multiple things we need to do as a part of the uh, top of the funnel or a brand awareness. Look at social media communication. I need to look at content. So basically I need to educate my set of consumer or customer, right? I need to educate them telling that, hey, whenever you need, but consider my brand. Uh, Whenever you are, uh, uh, so basically, basically push, pushing your them and hope whenever I need my services or product, I should be part of the consideration set, which is a middle of the funnel. Funnel is very simple, right? I, I look at word of mouth, I look at brand collaboration, I look at uh, uh, influencers, right? So, so if I have used the product, if I uh, 
looking at my friend who the similar category of product and i get a word of mouth from there and now influencers i kind of looked at very very differently specifically post covid uh, uh, where they, they get niche influencers in a specific category so travel has a uh, uh, different influencer fashion has a different niche influencer right and what is important to note and see is that forms and and then you go to the bottom of the funnel where the real sales happen which is through google which is marketplace where referral works cred where the point of sale is pretty short of route so running an amazon marketing uh, ams ads uh, uh, running a campaign on uh, cred flipkart is closer to a purchase point of purchase right so this is the whole funnel which we should obviously look at different ways a different specifically to make sure that i go to awareness consideration and sales this is an interesting one right top of the funnel uh, standpoint right so i was talking about seo right now this is one of our client now this is tata health basically now what happened is that uh, um, SEO is the second important acquisition channel guys from a D2C standpoint, right? Um, there were specific set of keywords like online doctor, chat with an hair specialist, or an online doctor consultation. We were able to get them on rank one, page one, right? And look at the numbers. 461% increase in 426 increase in chat initiated right uh, which with chat initiated it means from an online doctor consultation standpoint and my cost drastically went down right it was only because i started ranking on page one of google correct so this is you can clearly see that yes you need to spend some time and money on uh, google uh, from an seo standpoint so important to note and see that uh, my media spend went down right it's a cross basically my media spend keeps on going down and my traffic keeps on increasing when i look at an seo specifically correct so that that's an to understand that helps you to build a top of the funnel now when you look at the middle of the funnel so what i'm trying to do here if you notice is i'm speaking about top of the funnel right I'm speaking about middle of the funnel. I'm giving example with respect to bottom of the funnel. So top of the funnel is SEO, right? Middle of the funnel. So let's take an example, a brand called a 3M, right? Uh, now, when you look, uh, uh, we, we ran a lot of social media uh, campaigns. Okay. Uh, so when I look at the middle of the funnel piece, um, I look at two things. One is top of the funnel point of view, social ads. When you look at the middle of the funnel point of view, um, I, I collaborated with Danjo. Um, I, I ran an influencer-led campaign, right, which is here. And what I did, they were speaking about my product and the strategy that we used is homemakers as my target audience, using my product and homemakers in a vernacular language. Uh, so Tamil Nadu, a separate kind of vernaculars, Telugu, a separate kind of vernaculars, Hindi, a separate kind of vernaculars language, right? And in the YouTube description, they were giving a, giving a affiliate link. So you can also track with respect to what percentage of people who have clicked on the link, gone to the Amazon page and bought the product, right? Which is middle of the funnel. So which is which is not bottom of the funnel, which is middle of the funnel where it's a little step ahead or above uh, the point of sale and see this. They were, they were giving this a part of description and they were coming to the uh, uh, bottom of the funnel, which is this. Now, bottom of the funnel, as I mentioned to you, running an ad on Amazon. And I got about uh, 10 million visits to the stores, right? I moved an ROS from 0.2x to x. They look at the improvement standpoint. So running an ad on an Amazon will be a bottom of the funnel. So I'll quickly move and re -crap, recap again. Top of the funnel is SEO. Middle of the funnel, um, uh, uh, influencer-led campaign. And bottom of the funnel is uh, running. 
lead ads on Amazon, which is AMS, right? Now, <clears throat> there are multiple ways uh, uh, that you can reach out to your audience. You can reach out to Facebook, you can reach out to Google Ads, you can reach out to YouTube. What is that you do a targeting which is correct enough, right? So let's take an example. I'm giving multiple cohorts example. So if I'm, I'm selling a command product and I know that homemakers are going to buy my product, it is important that I create those cohorts uh, which basically deals with homemakers in a specific age group sit, uh, 20 or 3. This is one of the example which I'm giving with respect to creating multiple cohorts. So I have a male, 25 to 45 years old. I have women, 20 to 35 years. I have a youngster from 18 to 24 years, right? The male lives in tier two city, active shopper, interest in freebie, right? Uh, uh, I have a woman who lives in the metro. She's a working professional and she has an interest in skin and hair care. I have a youngster from 18 to 20. She binges on Netflix, Hotstar and all, and she owns an Android. So what, are, what is important is you're talking about brand communication. It's a three-layer approach. Huh? One is the brand communication. The communication piece is like a triangle. On the top corner, you have a brand communication. On the left corner, you have a TG and the right TG about the target group or a target audience. And the third one is a right platform. So when you're looking at D2C, you need to crack all three pieces. You have to figure it out what is my right uh, what is my tg and what is my platform so i spoke about tg brand communication i gave an example uh, of a brand proposition right uh, which is uber rola and uh, other pieces and previously i spoke about different platforms i'm doing seo i'm present on facebook so let's assume i'm, I'm building a brand which is into personal care which is into apparel which is very visually appealing brand right i want to be a lot more active on on platform like uh, instagram correct uh, let's assume i'm building a brand which is very gen z specific right uh, so now uh, uh, gen z specific is there on insta but there these are a lot more active platform like snapchat right so my platform is the third uh, uh, corner which i need to look at correct at the same time let's assume i'm building a brand which is for my parents which is 50 plus take an example, right? My, my parents are not on Instagram. They're very active on YouTube and uh, Facebook. And, and they, they like to consume content in a vernacular language. I have friends and families who parents from Chennai, uh, Maharashtra, they want to consume in Tamil Nadu, Tamil and, and Mara, uh, Marathi respectively, right? So what is important and more of them, my parents are not on Instagram. So crack the triangle piece. Brand communication, right platform, right? What are talking about, and what is my TG? If it's a basic piece, that's that's uh, the, the magic um, happens there. Okay. Now, um, what is important is uh, to understand um, how 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 can I sell my product, D2C product. So, basically, three ways that you can do it. The first one is. You create your own website, there are different ways to create your own website. You can look at Shopify, WooCommerce, which is part of WordPress, uh, or like a, like a um, uh, Dukan or a Shopmatic, whatever it is, there's multiple platforms that you can use it. You create a D2C website, people directly come to your website, buy the product, and then move on. But you know, take care of delivery and all that bit of it. That is one. Second is you have a D2C product, right? You sell that product on different platforms. You you sell Amazon, you sell that on Flipkart, you sell them on Thread, right? And and these platforms have a critical mass of an audience. Um, these platforms uh, on, already have to visit uh, those those. Now, uh, if if that is the case, what happens is that uh, you build up on multiple pieces, like the way both have drastically done it, right? They build up the whole. Mamas have done it, like all the bigger players. Couple of them you saw them in a Shark Tank. Obviously, you know them, Aman and uh, Gazan. So I, I personally also know them by the virtue of working with them, right? They've used Amazon very, very effectively. They build up on uh, Amazon reviews because that's where word of mouth happens. That's the credibility and trust comes in, right? Um, and that's where <coughs> you're able to get about 
10 to 8 to 10 X of an ROI if you kind of act effectively present on, on uh, e-commerce, right? Boat is another example. So if you see, I'm searching for a boat earphone, I'm getting Bolt's ad. And Bolt is a competitor uh, of your, uh, Bolt is a competitor for Bolt. So those ads specifically, look, look at the reviews guys, 40,000 reviews uh, uh, about, this is for Bolt. Bolt has 40,000 reviews, Bolt has about 100K reviews, right? And they build up this brand on using the right ways to deal with Amazon e-commerce, right? Right ways, bullet brand uh, in place, getting the, the uh, reviews in place, all that thing. Okay, now this is one thing which I was talking about, um, uh, which is influencers. So we need to use influencers, that, that's the code of my business because that's where the word of mouth happens, that's where the collaboration happens. But what is important to understand is how will I measure the performance? How will I come to know that this is working, this is not working? I can, if I do it in a correct way. So if you go and check any of the, look at Tanmay Bhatt's uh, 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 YouTube description, right? They have, they're given the description to buy on Amazon. They have given the description to buy or download an app uh, with respect to Zerodha, right? It's called affiliate. So whatever people who come through that link, they buy the product, right? And when they buy the product, there's a commission which the brand and the influencer also get. Brand gives it to influencer, what I mean. So, and then you clearly see that this influencer is working, this is not working. Now, with respect to either brand awareness, middle of the funnel or bottom of the funnel, that's objective which you can set with influencer. You can clearly see that, um, like Mama Earth have used for onion, uh, oil, right? See this, use a code or a 20% uh, discount, I think. There's a saying which goes in the market. If you're not working, Mama, you're not in writing. You're not an influencer, in fact. Metrics which you should use or measure is purchase, repeat purchase, average order value, and lifetime value. So let's assume Mintra have spent a thousand rupees to acquire a consumer or customer, and the customer have bought fifteen uh, hundred rupees product. So it doesn't mean that my ROS is less. No. What you need to look at about a year or a couple of years how many people or for that how many products or how many purchases what purchase value they have done uh, with respect uh, 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 to that platform so thousand rupees have gone in terms of and customer if they over a course of about a, 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 a year they spend about ten thousand rupees so basically you spend is to get a consumer or customer who is doing a purchase of ten thousand rupees which is 10x right uh, so you can't leave it at the first purchase. You need to focus on the repeat purchase. You know, look at what an average order value. Can I increase it if somebody is buying shoes? Can I get them socks? Can somebody is buying a camera? Can I, uh, if somebody is buying a phone, can I give them the phone cover? Is somebody buying a television? Uh, Amazon Fire Stick, that, that's something that obviously we can do. And look at the whole lifetime uh, value of the revenue. Don't focus on the first purchase, second purchase, and third purchase because effectively, you're getting that consumer and customer into ecosystem. I, I, I got acquired by Mintra like six years, seven years, eight years, 10 years back. I'm still using it. But now I have my app on the phone. Mintra doesn't have to spend money to get me on board. Okay, now this is a board, very, very interesting piece, a like big dilemma which I spoke about, right? Um, shall I shall I bin up my own digital commerce channel or I build a store uh, front on um, marketplace? So, I, I did mention that when you're starting the D2C brand, there are multiple ways that we can build a brand. Uh, we can build up a brand with respect to digital commerce channel. Uh, what, I, what I mean by that is uh, uh, having your own channel, somebody goes to the website, buy the uh, uh, brand, buy the product, right? Now, if I, if I look at that uh, piece, um, it, it's an expensive way to do it. But again, you hold that data. So, Bevaku, dot com have done this or chumbak have done this in a right way and they were they were selling they're still selling on uh, mintra amazon and all so the product or brand discovery may happen on the channel right but what happens eventually after that is is once you like the product once you become a loyal consumer and customer you may not go to amazon and flipkart and mintra to buy 
you directly go to the website and that there are multiple players socks product uh, undergarments product apparel product and multiple categories that have been made over the course of few uh, years right so but what you need to do is you cannot ignore one channel both started with amazon and flipkart Aman, the founder, I've mentioned a zillion times, and I think it's become popular with the Shark Tank. It's his 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 uh, quotes have become a lot more public in public domain, right? And then they slowly built their own channel, right? The magic or the real stuff starts happening when the consumer starts coming to a website or an app and start buying it. Obviously, because you don't have to pay the commission to Amazon. You own the data, you have the data, you can break, mint the data, mine the data, and cross sell. So if let's assume you're buying a uh, earphone and you know that the lifetime of my earphone is six to seven months you selling the earphone on a six to seven month space uh, instead of earphone you can sell phone you can sell different kind of categories outdoors indoors right multiple pieces so that that's something that you can obviously build on okay since i have just five minutes i'm going to quickly run you through uh, one of the case studies which is mama's case study uh, it's 335 and at 340 will open the forum with this particular q a we are on time, we're not running late. Uh, so if you look at Mama Earth, right? This is the brand that we build. We're working there for three or four years now. Uh, so brand proposition. Proposition that was there, beautiful indeed. Um, which speaks about the fact that everybody uh, does something. The definition of beautiful uh, uh, in this or goodness. So it doesn't mean that you have to do something to show off. If somebody is help, you're helping somebody uh, way is also a beautiful uh, deed right uh, so we wanted to change the common notion of a beauty correct it's 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 a, it's a way that people perceive that uh, and we uh, a social stand while not staying away from a mama's brand proposition we understood uh, the two categories very sensitive categories which is both baby so uh, and, and my tg was my target group was a new age parent of middle-aged uh, adults we ran campaign they, they got some awesome 46 about social impression teeth. good piece we rolled out this is top of the funnel when they roll a brand film 76 percent of brands parents recall that film even though after eight weeks of release that's something which we measured it right another campaign that we did I'll play the I'll come back where we collaborated with different influencers so every order which you do at plant goodness every every order that you do at mama Earth website uh, they plant uh, something this is a full video that we did um, we we kind of measure it with respect to the swipers right there's a brand proposition from a communication point of view to each category of the product was having a visual different visual appeal right uh, there's this Valentine's Day campaign launches we used Instagram very effectively with respect to having right not just focusing on uh, the product but also the new age product and how we can use social media for the same uh, we we this is a few set of communication influencer brands I think I spoke about it already uh, the numbers we build up different sales properties. What is important, like a wow Wednesday. So people expect or hope that every Wednesday they get a discount when they come to the website. So that anticipation uh, is important. You know that there is going to end of reason sale is going to come on Mintra twice a year. You wait for it. Same thing, uh, considering it's a personal care, you can't do it twice in a year. So you do do it once in in a week, and we build up a property like a Wow Wednesday or Mask Up Sunday with respect to engagement, multiple innovation with respect to Instagram stickers. So so that we engage with an audience. All the Instagram and uh, Facebook had measure it. How many people were swiping up? How many people are coming to my website? How many people are buying the product and everything? But my 40 minutes, guys. Uh, 39. I finished in a minute before. Okay, I'm sharing my screen now. I've finished in 39 minutes, yeah. save one minute. <laughs> yeah, Himanshu. 
Thank you. So guys, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask in the question tab and answer all your questions. So this is the first question from Hemant. Um, Hemant is saying communication without the product and in the top of the funnel. Okay. Uh, how can do a brand communication without the product uh, in the top of the funnel? Brand communication can't happen without the product. What, what is important is, so they need one product, right? But you can't sell the product uh, at, a, uh, at the top of the funnel. What you need to do is on USP of that product. So let's assume if you're building a product which is chemical free, right? Take an example, that's the DNA of your product. What you need to do is effectively uh, speak about the benefits which you would get of using no chemical and then certainly push your product in that uh, space when you say that hey if you're using any kind of a product it is advisable to use which is and then over a course of time when somebody leaves in your brand right you start selling your product so when when, when colgate or sensodyne uh, started uh, the communication look at the brand film right initially they speak about toothbrush they speak about brushing it in the morning kellogg's when they launched in india they, they never spoke about the product they they introduced of obviously or conflict hey if you believe in the stock progress kellogg's and all is the right platform that's always the top of the funnel you make people believe in your category in your and that's always the case. Fevicol says that Jod, that, that's a brand proposition, right? And then you say that the concept of Jod, Fevicol, you buy. That's what I mean. Same as I hope I have answered a question. Yeah, there's a new question from Amit. Amit is saying, at what time uh, in startup process should one start brand building activities? Day one. There's no time or cut off time that hey, this is when you have to start working on the brand building piece. So brand building it's step number one. People don't so remember the Nike and T-shirt example. People don't people believe in brand. Right? If I if I put a Coke and Pepsi on in front of you guys also, right? Uh both same or different. But if if your brand Coke will buy that. If I put the same shoes of Adidas and Nike, and if you buy Nike or Adidas, I'm going to pick that up. So brand building needs to start from day one. You can't, and that's an integral part of any brand, as a matter of fact. What the problem people think is that a different, they have a different thought process of saying that. Abhi pehle performance marketing kar leta Building? No, no, no. Yes, the focus is obviously on the performance marketing we're starting off, but the brand communication, the ethos needs to be very clear and laid down and people believe in brand. Right. Uh, there's a question from Purnima as well. Uh, what is the better for a startup? Selling through a website or a, through a marketplace? Both. 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 I think I answered a question, the dilemma, big dilemma, both. Hands down, uh, both. Because uh, when you're starting with your own website, there is no critical or critical mass, right? There is not not a massive audience that you have you can sell it to, correct? Versus if you look at an e-commerce, Amazon, Flipkart, Big Basket, whatever it is, they spent uh, uh, so much money to build that critical mass. They spend so much money um, to make sure that that sort of an audience comes to the website. Leverage that. Yes, you may have to spend 30% extra with respect to commissions or 10 to 20%. But that's a, you consider that as a part of an acquisition cost. And once people you start using your product list, high chance question is both hands down. I think I'll put that on the slide also. Yeah, there's a question from Anchal. Uh, best way of doing brand communication for a service. Anjali, you're asking me uh, a, a question which requires another webinar, to be honest. <laughs> There are a lot of ways, there are a lot of ways, but but some rule is uh, need to figure it out that what is your moat? What is that USP which makes you different um, as compared to your product? So uh, as compared to your computer, my bad. 
the moat could be anything the salient feature of your product it could be the price point it could be the distribution ambassador anything but you need to have that usp and you need to answer that why would somebody come to you right and it cannot be formed in day one you need to speak to your consumer you need to do a focus group discussion you need to figure it out what my consumer need and customer am i giving that to them or not correct so there are multiple cases so coffee which has come right a coffee lover says that star coffee both starbucks both expensive as 300 400 rupees slick coffee same quality same everything even 100 rupees right is giving that ecosystem so whatever you're talking about there needs to be some bit of usp and then you build up on that as part of communication so brand communication cannot be done in a silos first take, figure it out what my us and then you build a communication on top of that yeah there's a new question from vikas saying that how to write quality content that will drive to our website or a landing page first and foremost thing quality content if you're talking about don't copy from a competitor the biggest mistake that we do now, they put MRI competitor, they will website page or we change a little bit of it and ship it across. No. If you do that, what is going to happen is that from first minute itself, you are influenced by your competitor. So then you're making an effort to be different. Don't do that. First, think about your product, think about your brand, and then write. You may benchmark it with your competition after you've written something. And if you look at it, right, you pick up Infosys, Wipro, TCS, Accenture, any of the IT company, Sapka content looks the same. It's copied or it's taken from another website altogether here and there. If we go and visit our own website, Social Panga's website, you will find that it's a unique content. We never ever looked at any marketing, branding, digital agency. What we believed in, we started working on that piece. And we referred it to how it should not miss out on anything which is important. From an industry benchmark, which is like a five to seven percent of it. Prakash, yeah, I open to the question. Yeah, Noreen has shared like how to increase product sale on Instagram. Uh, many creators and influencers, but the product couldn't reach the right customer. How to increase the views on the Instagram reels? Okay, so there are multiple set of questions here. Uh, sale is obviously use all the right. As in, in a product description, in, sorry, in a, in a uh, Instagram bio, make sure to put uh, the Bitly link, which is trackable, which goes to the website. In your uh, this thing, uh, uh, stories, make sure you have a swipe up, right? Uh, in every communication which you're doing, link it back because you can't put a caption, in, or you can't put a link in your caption. Again, Bitly uh, piece, that is one. Second, when you're fi finding the influencer, na. The way the the way we look at it is very different. So let's assume if my competitor, if let's assume two competitors, which is Upstock and Zeroda. So if Zeroda has used a specific influencer, Upstock is also good. Correct. And the point that needs to be noted is that the first mover advantage for that influencer is already gone because Zeroda have kept taken that this thing. Uh, and that's the biggest mistake. Yeah, I made a competitor and influencer use care. Let me also use it. No. <laughs> you should not use it. What in to figure it out? Simple rule book. Mapping of your TG, your target group, to the mapping of the influencer has. So let's assume your TG is homemakers in regional language. Homemakers, you know, tier two or tier three, Punjab. Get the influencer who is into cooking business, not Ranvi Barar, which is tier one but somebody with a small number numbers is not a matrix of uh, is it is it relevant or not but the kind of the quality of influencer is so people who are following them is it from punjab is it who believes in vernacular language this is what you need to look at right yeah question from avinash uh, how to approach brand communication and strategy for rural tg you have answered, I think. I have answered by three things. Yeah. One is pick up the right platform. Don't just focus on Instagram. Rural may share chat, Mooch, Josh. There's so many platforms which is there, um, which we not even heard about it. So 
we work with multiple set of brands where a tier two tier three rural is a focus area since sitting in delhi sitting in bangalore sitting in bombay we assume ki ha wo log use kar rahe honge nahi do a proper research and figure it out platform communication speak in their own language don't speak in english third is don't make a communication setting in bangalore and bombay go and speak with them what they see what they want and then build up so platform the same thing a triangle piece of it but relevant for that yeah okay okay raju singh hum over to you uh vikas is saying or just to focus on lead and conversion uh, is it really necessary to give more attention to our brand social media followers yeah, it's part of top of the funnel uh, right you can't ignore it you will if not today tomorrow you will need a brand awareness because you going to reach a saturation point after which you will not be able to find more set of an audience that's why this community will come a lot more helpful will be relevant yeah thank you uh so i can see it, it is a last question so once again uh thank you uh thank you everyone um i just want to share that uh, every month we invite someone from the industry uh, to share their experience and thanks to himanshu for sharing this valuable information i hope all of you have got value from today's session guys uh, on 5th of august we are conducting one um, new session on art and science of influencer marketing uh, this is again uh, conducted by one of the a uh, renowned person industry and i'm sharing this link with all of you i hope you all can see this link in the question tab i request everyone if you're interested in session on influencer marketing you can just visit our website i can share our website uh, as well let me uh, shall i take the present issue yep yep over to you so thanks a lot thank everybody you. really appreciate it yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. So, guys, Have you can see the session on our website digitalvidya.com, right? You all can register. I have shared this link with all of, you, right? Website and register for this upcoming session as well. I want to start one poll. Uh, the poll is about the feedback about today's session, right? So, uh, uh, just share this feedback. How was this session for you? and share this poll and after that uh, if you still have any question you can ask me and i can reply all your questions as well so once again thank you himanshu thanks a lot for giving all your time uh, for this session and uh, um, if if anybody has any question i'll uh, sure send it to you guys you all will go also get recordings of today's session on your recording uh, in the next few hours in your after that uh, if you of for our upcoming session you can register on our website as well and guys those who are new to digital marketing and those who are interested to learn digital marketing putting training programs every month right so if you're interested to attend digital with uh, I'm, i'm just initiating a poll the poll is about our upcoming training batches so guys if you're interested to start digital marketing training program you can submit your feed batches if you are sure that trusted look sure so it's just for freshers or newbies who are new to digital marketing so uh, you can give you a poll now ankit uh, you will get the recording of this session in the next few hours so whatever email you have added in your registration form you will get an email right uh there is one more poll guys which is pending uh, and that is about your feedback for upcoming like i said every month we invite industry experts right so we do conduct uh, webinars and uh, i want to take a small feed as well like on which topic you want to have a webinar so if you have a specific topic in your mind for which you want to uh, i mean uh, join a session you can just share your feedback and i'll pass on to my training team and uh, they can arrange a uh, industry expert for you guys and we can do this session uh, by the way we do have uh, i mean few topics for, i mean interest so after this poll completion i'll be sharing these topic names as well so i'm completing this poll now and i'm sharing the poll about uh, the webinar topics which you are interested uh, so i have shared this poll which is about the topics 
which you think are important i mean if, if you're interested to have session on online advertisement or performance marketing you can select option one if you're interested to attend session on youtube video seo marketing option two if you're interested to attend session on facebook or meta advertisement option three or for growth hacking or personal branding just share your feedback guys so uh, in the next up and upcoming uh, sessions we will be conducting sessions on these topics so whichever topic has the highest preference will uh, i mean uh, will conduct this session so do visit our website digitalvedya.com every month we invite uh, industry experts and we do conduct sessions and in the resources section you can see we have a webinar page where we update a list of all the webinars which we do every month right so ankit we have a upcoming session on this august 5th it is on influencer marketing and you can visit our website digitalvedya.com under resources section webinar page we have added the link i've shared this link with all of you i'll again share this link right so if you want to join our upcoming session which is on 5th of august you can register yourself and you'll get the register joining link for the session right so guys if you still have any questions uh, please feel free to mail us at info at digitalvidya.com if you need any consultation Himanshu for your business or project if you're working in an employee or you need some consultation on your project you can reach him on his website socialpanga.com uh, I want to say something about uh, how people reach you uh, you can share and then we can close this thanks Raj uh, you can reach out to us on .com or coffee at socialpanga.com I'm active on on the platform, LinkedIn, platform, LinkedIn or, or Twitter. More than happy to hear your thoughts and stories on that platform. Thank you. Right. All right. Thank you, Himanshu. Thanks a lot for giving your valuable time in this session. And guys, yeah. This. So with this note, I'm completing this session now, and see you in the next upcoming August fifth. Amit, uh, you. you can reach him on socialpanga.com, and and I mean which you have right thank you guys thank you for attending today's session bye bye thank you Imanshu, once again